These entitled brides and grooms make me sick. I'm just kidding, I actually haven't read these yet, but <laughs> all the other videos that I did on this content made me very annoyed, so I can only imagine. I have an itch. Warning, rant ahead. How many times I say that in a week? <laughs> I'm getting married next Saturday, the 16th. All of my bridesmaids are gorgeous, and honestly, I can't imagine having better looking friends. My issue is my fiance's best man. He's only 5'3", so he will look ridiculous, so he will look ridiculous escorting my sister down the aisle. He is homely as well, a unibrow and crooked teeth. One of those really big smiles that shows his teeth and 10 feet of gum too. I asked my future husband if he could be at the end of the line of men in all the pictures and during the ceremony. That way he can be cropped out or avoided in photos. It would make him have to pick another best man. He won't do it because his friend spent 10K on his bachelor party weekend. I don't particularly care. And if he decides that his gift depends on his placement in the wedding party, I don't think he's a good friend anyway. Well, I don't think you're a good human. I'm crying and so upset that my fiance said he wouldn't move him. I'm so insanely upset and I told him I'm calling off the wedding. Oh Jesus, run for the hills. I just need some support from fellow women who know how stressful it is to pull off a beautiful day and aesthetically pleasing wedding. Mm, how you do that is um, you just be a good human. The fact that this is even a conversation between you and your husband and now you're, look, fiance, and you're bold enough and confident enough to post this online, God have mercy on your soul. Like I can't even imagine feeling confident enough to post something like this online let alone have this conversation in my private life. How do you sleep at night? I cannot imagine judging someone off their looks. So like, I don't, what's the word? Shallow, that's the word. I'm thinking of the movie Shallow. Shallow how? The whole life lesson about being shallow and judging someone off their looks. Have you learned nothing? Watch the movie. Oh, we got a Karen. I see a picture of a boat, but the name is crossed out and it says Karen. Big wedding announcement. I've noticed a lot of you who have RSVP'd have not sent a gift or signed up for my registry. That's pathetic and sad after all I've given others at their weddings. Don't even show up without a gift. I've spent a lot of savings on this wedding and it's disrespectful AF to not give a gift. You have one week to send a gift or I'm taking you off the guest list. If you need my address, PM me. I'm sorry, when we RSVP for a wedding, are we, are we expected to send a gift before the wedding? Do we not bring gifts on the wedding day? Money in an envelope placed in the box? <laughs> like, what am I missing here? Well, good luck to everyone on that guest list because if I ever received that, I would be thrilled to be taken off that list. Yeah, I'll sit this one out. I am so happy I have good friends and I've had a wonderful wedding experience. Hard cash instead of gifts, entitled bride story. This was a few years ago, but I thought it would fit here. It does, it fits right in. A friend of mine was getting married and I was happy to receive an invitation. Well, until I read the letter that came with it. The bride and groom had decided that they didn't want actual gifts for the wedding. Instead, we were each expected to give them 500 pounds. Nothing less would be considered. Now, I'm a reenactor. What the hell? Oh my God, reenactor. I know what you're saying back there. I know what you're saying. Looking at this screen right now, you are so disappointed in me and just know that I am that disappointed in myself. And knew someone at the time who made really beautiful crystal goblets, which was what I was going to buy. I mentioned this to the bride and she blew up on me, calling me ungrateful and saying that unless I stumped up the money, I could expect to be uninvited, even on the day itself. Turns out I wasn't the only one that she said that to. Relatives, lifelong friends, workmates, basically everyone who was given this ultimatum, 500 pounds or get lost. On the day of the wedding, there was about three guests and the in-laws. I heard this later from the brother of the groom as even the bridesmaids and best 
man bailed after they were told that they were expected to put up the money as well. The bride took to social media to have a go at a lot of us, tagging lots of people in each post. I think that she thought this would shame all of us. It backfired. People ended up blocking her. Haven't spoken to the pair in years. Don't think that I want to. Mm-mm. No, you don't. You absolutely don't. Like, not only are you just like not having people show up to your wedding, but you're losing those friends. Outside of your wedding day, who's gonna wanna be friends with a person like that? Couldn't be me. Oh, we have a group called Brides on a Budget. I'll keep that in mind. Help, our wedding day is 416 heart. My parents have offered a generous amount of money, which will cover food, flowers, and photography. Oh, that's so nice. My fiance's parents are covering the rehearsal dinner. Oh, that's so nice. Am I selfish slash wrong that his parents aren't willing to chip in for the wedding as well? Yes, we have money to pay for things, but we also just bought a house and most of our money has gone there. Please help as I am feeling very frustrated about this situation. I'm trying to not feel bitter towards my fiance or his parents. Oh girl, oh, girl, oh, you are in the wrong group. When I think of brides on a budget, I'm thinking of brides who don't have parents and in-laws paying for the wedding. Oh my God, okay, well. We just got somebody who's just a little bit spoiled on our hands. Someone who's used to just getting what they want, apparently. I cannot imagine. Your, their fia your fiance's parents, so your future in-laws, are covering the rehearsal dinner. That is them pitching in for the wedding. The rehearsal is still part of the wedding. Oh my god. Okie dokie. I don't want to be in that group anymore. Ooh, we got an AITA case. I love these. Am I the a-hole? if I don't give the bride and groom my gift from two years ago. Huh. My boyfriend and I were invited to a wedding to a couple we barely know. He wasn't able to make it, so I went alone. Besides the wedding, we've only hung out with this couple one time. Oh, at a previous bachelor bachelorette party. Why did they invite you? I forgot to bring in their gift at the wedding since I took our child with me and trying to wrangle a toddler alone was harder than I thought. I reached out to the couple immediately the next day and asked if I could drop off their gift and didn't hear anything from them for months afterwards. It has been two years and every couple of months, like four or five months in between, they reach out asking for the gift. Am I an a-hole if I don't give it to them? What do I even say at this point? It's been so long, but they're obviously hung up on it. I just feel like it was incredibly rude to ignore my message, especially when they didn't go on a honeymoon. So it's not like they didn't have cell service. I also think it's rude to keep asking about a gift when they ignored my previous attempts to give it to them. I feel like an a-hole, but my boyfriend says just ignore them. Edit to add. They'll reach out asking for their gift, to which I respond, yes, is there a good day I can drop it off or would you rather pick it up? To which I get radio silence for months before they respond again with, hey, can we get our wedding gift that you said you had? And the process repeats. After the year mark, I just gave up trying because they wouldn't give me anything to work with to get them their gift. I'm so glad you added that in. If it was just the one message ignored, I might be like, okay, you know, life gets busy, maybe just give it to them. But if this is going on, over and over and it's like I have tried to give you this gift it's obviously not that important to you so drop it move on you don't need my gift that bad these reading videos you guys they're taking a toll we have another group called that's it I'm wedding shaming advice edition oh that's fun we are having trouble with infertility oh We've spent a lot of money going to an infertility specialist and based on the cycle that we are in with fertility drugs, now is prime time for implantation. The problem is my brother-in-law and his fiance just completely changed their wedding plans for a destination wedding. They were originally having the wedding here. The problem with it is their wedding date would be incredibly close to our due date and I couldn't attend and I definitely would not feel comfortable with my husband the best man being outside of the country when I am near term. That's reasonable. I feel like it is only natural to want your spouse around in case you go into labor. Yup, I would want that too. They have requested that we wait for implantation until after their wedding. Infertility does not work that way. 
We have spent so much money to get to this point that it would be throwing it all away and starting again after their wedding, hoping for the same results. That may never happen. Now, granted, this may not even work, but if it does, am I wrong for telling my in-laws that my husband will absolutely not be attending a wedding that falls near my delivery date? Someone commented, shrug. You do you. Other people's plans have nothing to do with your own life plans, including baby time. Also, it's your husband's job to manage the in-laws. You owe them nothing and blah, blah, blah. They continue. I mean, I was kind of feeling the same vibe. You just do what's best for you and your family and your future and your future baby. They change the wedding plans. It doesn't work out anymore. It's all good. We love you. Best wishes. My husband will be here if I'm pregnant in case I go into labor. I feel like if they're not understanding of that, that's on them. Infertility is just such a, you know, it's not as simple as, you know, rescheduling a wedding like if we're being for real like let's pick which one is harder one of my friends katie that's a fake name good okay we're keeping this anonymous is getting married soon and while hanging out she mentioned that she will be sending us her venmo so that we could pitch in for the wedding I was confused, so I asked her what she meant. She said that since she and her soon-to-be husband couldn't afford the wedding party, they were requesting people to cash in as well. I come from a culture where parents usually pay for their kids' weddings, or sometimes the soon-to-be wed do it for themselves or borrow money, which they return back. I was confused and I asked Kate that when she will return the money then, because I really didn't think we were so close as to we could borrow money from each other and she probably got offended or something over that. My other friend Maya, fake name again, who's also from my culture, then explained to me that it's apparently normal to chip in for your friend's weddings here. I again got confused and somewhat offensive, asking if it's a wedding party, why do the guests need to pay then? Kate really got mad and called me an ass for embarrassing her in front of everyone. Her fiance later called me to say that I really hurt their feelings and now I am disinvited from the wedding. Okay, well, everything they just mentioned is not something that is normal to me. Like parents usually pay for their kids' weddings. Like that's, I don't know, that's not a given. I know, I know a lot of people that pay for their own weddings. You know, even if that is taking a loan out of a bank or they don't get married until they've saved a certain amount. This is a lot to take in here. <laughs> this is a lot of different, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I feel like maybe we can all just be a little understanding to, well, my culture does this. Well, mine does this. Maybe we don't have expectations. If you choose to ask for people to chip in and they don't, I don't think you should disinvite them. Like there's just a whole lot going on here. I don't know, I've never gone to a wedding party and had to pay for their wedding party. Have you guys? Like I bring a gift to the wedding party, but like to pay for the party? Because I'm confused as fuck. We got a text. Oh God, speaking of weddings, so my mate's niece is getting married. The invite stated that everyone is required to come early to help set up the marquee and decorations. It's 360 per head to be there and the men are required to then help break the marquee down. Also, no one, especially women, are allowed to wear overpowering scents as the bride doesn't want them competing with the flowers she has chosen. And no floral colors as it will be distracting in photos. And once the cleanup has been done, could everyone promptly leave? I'm not kidding you. What in the F? That is what I am saying. What in the F? 300, okay, $360 requirement. I'm required to set up and decorate your women. Your women, oh my God. Your wedding. <laughs> I was going on to the next thing of women's not being able to wear <laughs> Okay, we're not decorating women. Decorating the wedding and then tearing down the wedding and no, like I wouldn't go. I would not go to a wedding like that. Count me out, I don't care. All right, guys. <laughs> Clearly I need coffee or sleep. So I'm out of here. Stay classy out there. And you know, just, wait, did I say classy or sassy? I said classy, right? <laughs> I can't tell, I need to tell you to do both. It's very important. Stay classy out there, but keep it sassy, always.